بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوح وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعلمك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم First I should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us tawfiq to have another session together and we continue our reflections on hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam about knowledge as you remember we said that Shahid al-Thani rahmatullah alayhi in his book Munyatul Murid Fi Adab al-Mu'allim wal-Mufid wal-Mustafid has a section based on the Quranic verses about knowledge and then prophetic hadith and the next hadith is Man ghada ila al-Masjid لا يريد إلا ليتعلم خيرا أو ليعلمه كان له أجر معتمر تام العمرة ومن راح إلى المسجد لا يريد إلا ليتعلم خيرا أو ليعلمه فَلَهُ أَجْرُ حَاجٍ تَامِ الْحِجَّةِ Whoever goes to the mosque and his intention is only to learn something good, something useful or to teach what is good. So he goes to masjid basically as a place for learning like when we have madrasas in masjid or when we have majalis in masjid when we have classes in masjid this shows that masjid is not only a place for worship masjid is a place for worship and a place for learning all our masjid should from the beginning, think of having arrangements for holding classes, educational programs. And as I many times have said, everything that we do should have ma'rifa aspect, means something to add to the knowledge of people, something to un add to their understanding. The minimum is to remind them of what they already know but if it is just something as habit or as custom or as emotion without ma'rifa aspect this is not working so rasulullah according to this hadith said whoever goes to the masjid and he doesn't have any intention except to learn or to teach what is khair what is good he would have or she would have the reward of a person who has completed his or her Umrah. Imagine how difficult it is to do Umrah, especially for those who are not, you know, in uh, Mecca or nearby. People travel from all different parts of the world to go and do Umrah, which is great. And inshallah, Allah would give us the opportunity and blessing of going for Umrah. But despite the greatness of Umrah, if you go to Masjid for learning or teaching good, you would be given the same reward of someone whose Umrah has been completed. No problem in his Umrah. You may spend one hour, two hours for learning, maybe more, maybe less. 
this would be equal to going for maybe a week, maybe two weeks to do Umrah. Even more, whoever goes to Masjid, لا يريد إلا ليتعلم خيرا. He goes to Masjid again for learning or teaching خير. He has the reward of a Haji, a pilgrim who has completed his Hajj. With all the A'mal of Hajj, which is Umrah and Hajj, including you know, Wuquf in Arafat, in Mash'ar, in you know, Ramiz of Jamara, all those things. Mabit in Mina, Tawaf, tawaf Sai, Salat of Tawaf, all these things. If we really understood this great place that knowledge has in Islam, we would have spent more time, more resources on learning and teaching. The next hadith is Ogodu Aliman Aw Mutaliman Aw Mustamian Aw Muhibban Wala Takunil Khamisa Fatahlik. Try to be one of these four. First, Alim, a scholar, that's the best, if you can be a scholar. If you are not a scholar, be a muta'allam, a learner. Who is a learner? This hadith is very beautiful because it distinguishes between muta'allam and mustamir. Muta'allam is a serious learner. Someone who has planned for his studies, someone who has a structure in his studies, is a mutallam. Mustamir is a listener, a good listener. He goes to majlis, he finds a lecture, either online or, for example, physically. He listens, he takes notes, he thinks, he understands. He acts upon, but still this is mustana. Why? Because there is no plan. There is no structure. One day he listens to a lecture about something, another day about something totally different. Muta'allam is the one that is following a path. He knows where to begin from, where to end. I hope, inshallah, our KLC brothers and sisters are counted as muta'allim, not just mustamir. The value of KLC and similar platforms, hosas, you know, schools, is that you are serious learner, inshallah. So Rasulullah said, either be an alim or a muta'allim or mustamir, listener, or muhibban, someone who loves ulama, loves students, loves knowledge, loves books, loves classrooms. When he looks at a whiteboard for teaching, he, he likes it. When he looks at a pen, he likes pen. Why? Because they are used by ulama and learners. When he finds books, it's like seeing flowers he gets energy if he wants to donate if he wants to help if he wants to support he supports education this is muhab maybe he's be too busy to learn too old maybe although even old people can learn but somehow he thinks that for me it's not possible i'm too busy too old i don't know although i think no one has excuse for not being a learner but for any reason at least be muhab, be a lover, a supporter. At least encourage people. Thank them, praise them, give them energy, give them a spirit. Otherwise, fatahlik, you are destroyed. Your life is ruined. 
very beautiful hadith. So, Ughdu'aliman, aw muta'aliman, aw mustami'an, aw muhibban, wa la takun al-khamisa. Don't be the fifth fatahlik. Otherwise, you will be finished. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among ulama, inshallah. If not, at least among muta'allim. I don't want to go lower, but if for any reason not possible, mustami'in. If not, at least muhibbin. But inshallah, we should try to be among the scholars and learners. Another hadith. إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ فِي رِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَارْتَعُوا If you get into the gardens of heaven, enjoy yourself like someone who feeds himself. Benefit, feed yourself. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا رِيَاضُ الْجَنَّةِ Then they ask Rasulullah, Oh Rasulullah, what is the gardens here? The gardens of heaven? What, what do you mean by this word? قَالَ حِلَقُ الذِّكْرِ The circles of remembrance. فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ سَيَّارَاتٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ يَطْلُبُونَ حَلَقَ الذِّكْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels who go around, rooming angels, سَيَّارَات They do, you know, they go different places, سَيْر They move around, like patrols, rooming angels. يَطْلُبُونَ حَلَقَ الذِّكْرِ their job is to look for circles of remembrance. فَإِذَا أَتَوْ عَلَيْهِمْ When they arrive and reach those circles of remembrance, حَفُّوا بِهِمْ They surround them. They don't leave them. They surround them. They get around them. So they add another circle to their circles. Then he says, according to some ulama, halaqu dhikr is not where some people get together to invocate only the names of God. Maybe you first think that halaqu dhikr means circles of people who just invocate names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Some ulama said these are the places in which people learn halal and haram. They learn what are the rulings for buying, selling, praying, fasting, marriage, divorce, pilgrimage, and so on and so forth. These are halakul thikr. So learning is a great instance of remembrance of Allah. So I hope and I pray that inshallah our circle KLC Kothar Learning Circle inshallah is one of those circles because your intention is to learn what helps you in performing and carrying out your religious responsibilities and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being better human being being better husband better wife better mother better daughter better son better sister better brother better colleague better neighbor better worker better manager you want to learn all these things so inshallah I hope that this circle is one of those circles that those angels look for them and when they reach they make another silk around them inshallah that's 
something that is very much possible and inshallah it's the case inshallah and may Allah inshallah keep this honor for us and don't take this honor from us the next hadith خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فإذا في المسجد مجلسان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم left his home and went to masjid you know masjid of Rasulullah and home was connected so when Rasulullah was coming out of home he was in masjid so خرج في المسجد he came out and entered masjid then he saw in masjid فَإِذَا فِي الْمَسْجِدِ majlisan. He saw two sessions, two sittings, two gatherings. مَجْلِسٌ يتفقهون. There was a group of people who were trying to learn Islam, trying to learn religion. أَغَائِدْ أَخْلَاقْ أَحْكَامْ فِيقْ These things, they were trying to learn. وَمَجْلِسٌ يَدْعُونَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى وَيَسْأَلُونَهُ And there was another majlis in the masjid. They were calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked him for their request. They were asking for forgiveness. They were asking for ma'rifah. They were asking for healing, shafa, rizq. So two majlis. One is busy. With learning, one is busy with dua, istighfar, zikr. Faqal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon seeing these groups of people, said, Kilal majlisayne ila khair. Both of these gatherings are good. They would have good results. Amma haula fayyadu'un Allah. وَأَمَّا هَاؤُلَا فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ وَيُفَقِّهُونَ الْجَاهِلَ One group referring to those who were involved with zikr and dua and istighfar and tawassul and you know asking hajat from Allah. Rasulullah said, these are the people who call upon Allah. And the other people who were learning said, these are the people who learn and then they teach those who are jahil, those who are ignorant. هَاُولَاءِ أَفْضَلِ Those who are learning and try to learn so that they teach them other people. هَاُولَاءِ أَفْضَلِ They are better. Please think carefully about this. Masjid is a place for worship. But still, Rasulullah says in Masjid those who Learn, add to their understanding and knowledge about religion, and they want to then teach the people who are ignorant. Their practice of learning is better than those who just do worship. Indeed, I can say there are two types of worship. One is just physical worship and acts of worship. One is worshipping Allah through learning and teaching for the sake of Allah, of course. Then Rasulullah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent me for teaching. I have been sent as a teacher. If Rasulullah is rahmatun lil alameen, how does he do this? One major way of sending Rahmah and you know extending Rahmah to Alamin is through teaching. Then Rasulullah went and sat with those who were involved in learning. This is not to underestimate dua and tawassul and istighfar and ibadah. They are very, very important. But they would not suffice us from learning. And if you do your wajibat and a little of mustahabat, but 
and spend the rest on learning and teaching, inshallah you will do great things. So, how can we then lose any opportunity for learning? How can then we be grateful if Allah opens for us an opportunity for learning and we don't appreciate? Then certainly we would regret in dunya but especially in the akhirah when we see how much we have missed, how much we have lost and how much other people have benefited and learned. So, maybe I read just one more hadith and then we finish this part. The narrator is Safwan. He says, Ataytu nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa huwa fi al-masjid muttaki'un ala burdin lahu ahmar. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنِّي جِئْتُ أَطْلُبُ الْعِلْمِ فَقَالَ مَرْحَبًا بِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ He says, I went to Prophet to see him. He was in Masjid. And he was leaning on something. I told him, O oh, Messenger of God, I came seeking knowledge. Rasulullah said, Welcome, Marhaba. Welcome to the seeker of knowledge, Talib. Inna Talib al ilm la tahuffuhul malaikatu bi ajnahatiha. The seeker of knowledge truly would be surrounded by the angels. Angels would surround him with their wings. Then these angels will come on different levels so first they gather around him then some angels come on top of the other angels and this would reach the sky the heaven it means that there would not be just one row of the angels around him they would gather circles by circles till they reach the sky the lowest sky sama dunya out of love that they have for what this person is seeking, which is knowledge. The angels who are very good servants of Allah, very close to God, they are this much humble before seekers of knowledge. Because knowledge is very important. Knowledge is the foundation of the creation. Angels understand these things. So they show humbleness for those who seek knowledge. Okay, we stop here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in our pursuit of knowledge. We ask Allah to help us with our understanding, with grasping what we understand and learn. And study. We ask Allah to help us to implement what we learn. We ask Allah to help us share what we learn. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reflect, to be able to reflect in our life what we learn. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to help the learners, the seekers of knowledge. We ask Allah to make us humble before ulama, before our great scholars that throughout centuries they did their best so that me and you today in the 21st century would have access to the teachings of the prophets, to the teachings of imams. May Allah elevate the souls of the ulama who have passed away and may Allah keep alive those ulama who are alive and give them tawfiq inshallah 
to do better and more inshallah with what Allah has given them with their of course efforts okay now we can move on to the next inshallah se session and receive questions thank you very much wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin